I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. The world celebrated the 10th International Yoga Day on June 21st, honoring this holistic practice that fosters profound connections between the body, mind and spirit. Yoga has captivated global attention as nations embrace its transformative power, uniting communities in a shared journey towards inner peace and harmony. While this report captures the increasing global recognition of yoga's ability to enrich lives and promote holistic well-being. Yoga empowers individuals through movement, breath and a focused mind offering transformative benefits for physical health, mental clarity, and spiritual well-being. Every June 21st, the world celebrates International Yoga Day, promoting peace and a healthy lifestyle. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi marked the occasion in Srinagar, practicing yoga and meditation with locals at the Sherry Kashmir International Conference Center. His presence underscored yoga's profound impact on well-being and its role in promoting yoga tourism across India. In 2014, the United Nations designated June 21st as International Day of Yoga, following Prime Minister Modi's proposal, recognizing its universal importance. This year's theme was Yoga for Self and Society. आज दुनिया एक नई योग इकोनॉमी को आगे बढ़ने में देख रही है आप देखिए भारत में ऋषिकेश काशी से लेकर केरला तक योग टूरिज्म का नया ट्रेंड देखने को मिल रहा है दुनिया भर से टूरिस्ट इसलिए भारत आ रहे हैं क्योंकि उन्हें भारत में ऑथेंटिक योग सीख रहा है On Yoga Day, people from diverse backgrounds across the nation unite in practicing this ancient discipline. Amidst the morning mist, participants of all ages engage in synchronized yoga poses, guided by experienced instructors, emphasizing the health and spiritual benefits of each posture. Diplomats from various countries also participated in sessions, highlighting yoga's international appeal and universal significance. Fantastic to be here in Delhi, actually able to practice yoga on International Yoga Day with Dr. Rashad Toshankar. I mean, we're, both myself and my deputy are regular yoga practices, and so actually to be here with all the diplomatic corps was fantastic. I think it really is India's gift. It's been a wonderful morning, invigorating here, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the International uh, Day of Yoga, of course launched by Prime Minister Yo uh, uh, Modi in uh, New York. And uh, really, this is a, a wonderful way to celebrate harmony between the individual spirit and community, and we see this, uh, the UN, we see this as a path towards health, a path towards peace, and we're all here celebrating today. In New York City's Times Square, on the eve of International Yoga Day, amidst the bustling city life, yoga enthusiasts from around the world gathered on the summer solstice. Among them was Damon Warren from Wellington, who discovered the event three years ago drawn by its energy and serenity against the city's dynamic backdrop. It was about maybe three years ago, right, when COVID was starting to cool down, and every year I would come to New York. And I came here just on the summer solstice, and I saw this yoga, and I got so, I got so excited about it. I, I've been doing it ever since. As India and the world embraced Yoga Day, the event served as a powerful reminder of yoga's timeless wisdom and its transformative potential for individuals and societies alike. From the tranquil settings of Srinagar to the bustling streets of New York City, yoga continues to unite people globally, fostering a deeper connection to inner peace and holistic well-being. Three napkins, once a taboo subject in India, are now at the forefront of a transformative movement. 
Well, thanks to the tireless efforts of the government and NGOs who have continuously worked to raise awareness and educate people, societal attitudes towards menstruation have changed. Today, not only have sanitary pads become a part of daily life for many, but they have also provided women with employment opportunities to earn a substantial income. The women you're seeing aren't merely handing out sanitary napkins. They're spreading awareness and advocating for a bold, fresh perspective on menstruation. Once a taboo subject, sanitary napkins today are not just a basic universal requirement in women's health, but have also contributed to a healthier lifestyle and financial independence for many women across India. Moreover, the easy availability of sanitary napkins at a subsidized rate of around one cent under government initiatives like John Oshidi Suvita Sanitary Napkins, along with multiple awareness programs in collaboration with NGOs, has played a pivotal role in addressing this crucial issue. With the societal landscape undergoing a noticeable shift, women are now finding employment opportunities in the production and distribution of sanitary napkins, which were once stigmatized. Meet Ridwana Akhtar, the pad woman of Kashmir. Ridwana, recognizing the struggle of women for affordable and hygienic menstrual essentials, established a small-scale sanitary napkin manufacturing unit with government support in the Narupura village of Kashmir. Through this initiative, Ridwana has not only helped many improve their menstrual hygiene practices, but has also empowered them economically by providing employment opportunities. मैं बाकियों को भी रोजगार जो मतलब ये करवाल का काम है आज मैं वो साठ लड़कियों को दे रही हूँ और जो बुटीक है मैंने वहाँ डेढ़ सौ लड़कियों को मतलब सिखाया वो भी उन्होंने भी अपनी दुकान खोले और वहाँ भी दस लड़कियाँ काम कर रही हैं और घर में भी ये भी चलाती हूँ और घर भी चलाती हूँ अलकारिया मैन्युफैक्चर सैनिटरी नैपकिन कॉल्ड निसा सेलिंग अ पैक ऑफ एन फॉर अराउंड वन डॉलर They use high-quality raw materials such as air-laid paper, wood pulp, tissues with sap, and polyethylene films. Ridwana's efforts have transformed the lives of women in the Kashmir Valley. Her manufacturing unit trains local rural women to produce sanitary napkins, helping to break social taboos. कुकरनाग में रहती हूँ और हम ये सैनिटरी पैड का काम करते हैं और मैं पढ़ती हूँ बीजी थर्ड सेमिस्टर में। In rural India, many NGOs are working to spread awareness about menstrual hygiene and support small-scale units to manufacture sanitary napkins. Let's take you to the western Indian state of Gujarat, where an NGO is working in tribal areas to help women maintain cleanliness and health during menstruation. through the proper use of sanitary products and personal care practices The Shakti Foundation, a 13-year-old organization based in Surat city of Gujarat, operates six sanitary pad manufacturing units across various districts of the state. At these units, experts educate tribal women on menstrual health. the importance of using sanitary napkins and the manufacturing process all while working towards their upliftment and empowerment i always wanted to do something for tribal women rural women so with shakti foundation we have been working in the 12 districts of gujarat and we have multiple projects of health hygiene education skill development and livelihood We have adopted 68 ashram schools across South Gujarat, and we have uh, many projects of health hygiene and education running in these uh, ashram schools. We have seven sanitary pad making units, and we have two objectives with this. Uh, first of all, the tribal girls who make these sanitary pads, uh, we want them to build skill. and we also want them to earn something out of this project so that they can utilize this fund for their further education higher studies etc shakti foundation taraf thi amne aapvama aayu chhe ane amne jetlu use mate juye chhe etlu ame jate banavine lai shakiye chhe amne dar mahine sanitary press juye chhe 
तो अमने जितलू पॉसिबल था इतना मैं बनाविया चेना मैं अमरा यूज़ था इतना मैं ले गया चेना मैं आखो दिवस हम क्लास में आया चे पची अमने जहरे पन फ्री टाइम मरे तेरा मैं यहाँ अभी ने बनाविया चे आखो दिवस में हमें स्वाथी बस्सो जितला पेट बनाविया चे An increase in the active participation of women has revolutionized Indian society, leading to a shift in people's attitudes towards menstruation. As these women continue to innovate and inspire, they are not just creating sanitary napkins, they are crafting a brighter and healthier future for their communities. Moving on, the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir recently celebrated the Hindu festival of Mela Kheer Bhavani with fervor and gaiety. The festival highlighted the regional and religious integration between communities that came together to offer Kheer, also known as sweet milk pudding, in harmony. Let's take a look at how the years-old festival became a celebratory moment for interfaith. Situated 27 kilometers from Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir lies the temple of the most revered Hindu goddess, Kheer Bhavani. There are many legends associated with the temple and the goddess and it is believed that Lord Hanuman had brought the deity in the form of water in a pot made of pumpkin or coconut shell at this place. Recently, the temple drew hundreds of devotees from different religious backgrounds on the occasion of Mela Kheer Bhavani, who offered Kheer or sweet milk pudding to a sacred spring as part of the traditional Hindu festival. और मैं कामना करता हूं माता रानी से कि वैसे ही दिन फिर से आ जाए वो भाईचारा फिर से हमारा कायम हो जाए द फेस्टिवल इज सेलिब्रेटेड एवरी ईयर इन द पीरियड ऑफ मे एंड जून इट बिकम्स अ सेंटर पॉइंट फॉर पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट रिलीजंस परफॉर्मिंग रिचुअल्स एंड चैंटिंग प्रेयर्स एट द टेंपल एंड द एनुअल इवेंट शोकेसेस पीस एंड हार्मनी प्रिवेलिंग अमंग कम्युनिटीज आज हमने यहाँ पे पहले हम लोग यहाँ पे आए जल चलाया हम लोगों ने जो कच्ची रस्सी थी फिर हम लोगों ने पूजा वगैरह की फिर हम लोगों ने दिया जलाए फिर यहाँ पे आके हम लोगों ने चुनरी वगैरह जो थी वो चलाई और फिर साथ में हम लोगों ने प्रसाद वगैरह लिया यहाँ से सारा काफी अच्छा लगा फर्स्ट टाइम था अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस था काफी अच्छा लगा यहाँ पे आके The event is seen as the biggest symbol of communal harmony as Kashmiri pundits and Muslims gather together to mark the occasion. Festivals like these not just demonstrate the cultural beauty but also promotes love and harmony within the society. Now let's delve into World in Focus featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. Japan's Emperor Naruhito attended a banquet at London's Guild Hall hosted by the Lord Mayor and City of London Corporation Michael Minelli as part of the Emperor's three-day state visit to the United Kingdom on June 26. The band of the Coldstream Guards marched ahead of a banquet and upon arrival, Naruhito inspected the Guard of Honour. Britain's Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Edward, attended the banquet. The Empress trip seeks to celebrate and deepen the two countries' military, cultural and scientific ties and was postponed in 2020 due to the pandemic. Guildhall has a rich history. Built between 1411 and 1440, it was where the ruling merchant class once held court. Today, it hosts royal, national and international occasions, according to the venue's official website. Global warming affects many high-altitude medicinal plants, making cultivation challenging for mountain farmers. However, the High Altitude Plant Physiology Research Center at Karwal University in Uttarakhand is making significant strides. The center researches rare plants and provides farmers with research seeds and plants, enabling profitable cultivation. 
So let's explore how this research center is preserving high altitude plants and improving farmers' lives. Located in Srinagar city of the northern state of Uttarakhand, the High Altitude Plant Physiology Research Center under HMB Garhwal Central University has been a beacon of innovation for nearly 40 years, focusing on the challenging cultivation of medicinal plants. In these cutting-edge research labs, a dedicated team of students and researchers conduct in-depth studies on various plant species. Rigorous testing and experimentation are undertaken to unlock the secrets of successful medicinal plant cultivation. Presently, around 40 students are immersed in researching mountainous plants, striving to conserve endangered medicinal species through groundbreaking research and innovation. Their efforts aim to preserve these valuable plants and provide substantial benefits to farmers, fostering a sustainable and profitable agricultural future. Our vision of institute is that to disseminate the information of high altitude medicinal plants in the form of research as well as extension activities to the farmers. So basically what we do, we actually cultivate the medicinal plants and conserve them in vast area or in vast population so that we can disseminate those medicinal plants to the farmers field. Basically we can say our vision is to from lab to land. The research center boasts state-of-the-art laboratories and a sophisticated glass house where advanced cultivation techniques like aeroponics, geoponics and hydroponics are employed. This glass house features precise temperature control, enabling the successful growth of a wide variety of plants. The center periodically distributes these cultivated plants and herbs to farmers at no cost accompanied by comprehensive guidance on effective cultivation practices. This support ensures farmers can achieve optimal yields and enhance their profitability, making a significant impact on their livelihoods and promoting sustainable agricultural practices. We are preparing for people to उनके साथ भी हम काम करते हैं जिससे कि वो मोटिवेट रहे उनको तकनीकी ज्ञान की जानकारी रहे साथ में उनको ये भी बताते हैं कि आपको कोई प्रोड्यूस अगर आपने तैयार कर लिया है तो उसकी मार्केटिंग आप कहां कर सकते हैं और उससे फायदा क्या होता है कि एक तो जो कंपनियां हैं उनको क्वालिटी का रॉ मटेरियल मिल जाता है रॉ मटेरियल मिल जाता है साथ में उनका पैसा जो गांव वालों के पास जाता है उनको एक लाइवलीहुड का उनका ऑप्शन मिल जाता है अतिरिक्त उनकी कृषि के अलावा the efforts of the High Altitude Plant Physiology Research Centre are significantly benefiting the farmers who cultivate in high mountain regions. Let's meet a farmer from Pori Garhwal, Uttarakhand, who with the help of Research Centre began cultivating medicinal plants and is now earning substantial profits. In the picturesque mountains of Pori Garhwal lies the quaint village of Nola Baiswada, home to Vinod Kumarati. For the past 20 years, Vinod has been farming at an altitude of about 2,500 meters. With the invaluable assistance of the High Altitude Plant Physiology Research Center, he has established a thriving nursery, cultivating medicinal plants such as kutki and kut on a large scale. This strategic shift to medicinal plant cultivation has transformed Vinod's financial landscape, earning him an additional 8,500 USD to 9,500 USD annually. His success story underscores the profound impact of innovative agricultural practices and dedicated research support, significantly enhancing his livelihood and setting a benchmark for other mountain farmers. <laughs> जड़ी बूटियों की खेती की तकनीकी वैज्ञानिक जानकारियां दी गई कि तुम्हारे यहां पे इतनी सुंदर क्लाइमेट है यहां पे लगभग 2500 मीटर हाइट है और ये हिमालयन रेंज में आता है ये इसके पीछे पूरा हिमालय है तो उन्होंने हमें तकनीकी जानकारियां दी कि मतलब कि तुम्हारे यहां इस हाइट में इस मिट्टी में जड़ी बूटियां ये कुटकी कोट अतिश जटामासी बहुत अच्छी हो सकती हैं और हमने मेहनत की उनके सपोर्ट उन्होंने सपोर्ट किया 
और हमने यहाँ पे अपने जो खेतों में दिन रात मेहनत करके और अच्छा हम आज मुनाफा कमा रहे हैं अपनी जड़ी बूटियों से उस समय से हमारी स्थिति में कुछ परसेंटेज बढ़ोतरी हुई है Like Vinod Kumar Rathi, many other mountain farmers have also reaped significant benefits from the support provided by High Altitude Plant Physiology Research Center. The commendable efforts of this research center are not only driving agricultural innovation, but also playing a crucial role in empowering farmers. By integrating cutting-edge research with practical support, the research center is transforming lives and fostering sustainable development in the high altitude regions. Nestled in Gujarat's Dang district amid the Western Ghats, Saputara Hill Station offers an unforgettable escape into pristine nature and breathtaking landscapes. From exhilarating paragliding adventures high above the valley to serene boat rides on Saputara Lake, this hill station blends thrill and relaxation for every visitor. Let's uncover this majestic tourist destination in Gujarat. Situated at about 1000 meters above sea level and approximately 95 miles from Surat city, Saputara Hill Station is a paradise in the Western Ghats, blessed with unadulterated nature and picturesque landscapes. The hill station offers a plethora of activities to make every visit wholesome and memorable. Let's start with paragliding. a thrilling experience that allows visitors to soar high in the sky and marvel at the wondrous natural beauty below right now i am enjoying the this uh, uh, paragliding in paragliding we have spent more than 5 minutes good experience instructor is also good saputra ek tourist place hai to yahan pe nahi ke gujarat ke balki pure india se aur pure world se tourist aate hain और ये जो पॉइंट सापुतारा है यहाँ पे पैराग्लाइडिंग मतलब एक नया पॉइंट बन गया है ये एक एडवेंचर एक्टिविटी है तो अभी के लोगों को और जनरेशन को एडवेंचर एक्टिविटी बहुत ही ज़्यादा तेज कर रहा है सापुतारा कंटिन्यूज टू अमेज विथ इट्स लेक व्यू गार्डन नेसल द मिट्स द वैली ऑफरिंग अ परफेक्ट फैमिली आउटिंग विजिटर्स कैन एन्जॉय सरीन बोट राइड्स ऑन सापुतारा लेक enhancing their experience with paddle boats that blend leisure and exercise for all ages. Away from the daily hustle, families can enjoy picnics in the lush green garden alongside the lake, complemented by numerous food stalls offering typical Maharashtrian and Gujarati street foods. Aye Saputara ma फरवा लायक स्थलों बोटिंग है सनसेट पॉइंट सनराइज पॉइंट टेबल टेप पॉइंट जीप जीपलाइन रोप वे बधु सरस अमे अवरनवा समर में मॉन्सून में खास कर मॉन्सून में वारे मजा आए थे समर में एकदम ठंडक हो गए नाइट में बहुत सरस जवायक दृश्य हो स्ट्रीट फूड पर बहुत सारूँ है लो कोस्ट में है अँ होटल एवं बहुत सरस है एन एक्सपीरियंस अमने घो सारो मे आ बधु जो मैं बहु अति सुंदर लगे जे मैं पहले पांच वर्षे जो गेली करता तो अत्य सारूँ लगे अँ झाड़ वृक्षों वातावरण अँ ठंड गर्मी जीव तो कहीं लगत नहीं आप फरवा खावा पीवा एन्जॉय करने की बजी अमने मड़ी है ती कोई जगह नहीं मड़े एट मैंने सापुतारा जो महल अति सुंदर लगू है एट सापुतारा हाइस्ट पॉइंट लाइस टेबल टॉप अ फ्लेट टॉप हिल एंड पॉप्युलर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन ऑफरिंग अ सरीन एम्बियंस एंड अ कूल ब्रीज Tourists can engage in activities like horseback riding and camel riding, adding more fun to their experience. As the sun sets, tourists flock to Sunset Point for a thrilling ropeway ride, 
combining the excitement of a cable car journey with panoramic views of the lush green valleys and Saputara Lake below. Whether seeking a peaceful retreat or a place for family and friends, Saputara promises a memorable experience with its captivating views and tranquil atmosphere. As the sun sets over Saputara, casting a golden glow over its pristine lakes and verdant landscapes, it's clear why this hill station in Gujarat is a gem. Well, that's all for today's show, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.